Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about how to buy and mint NFTs using MetaMask and OpenSea. Now before we begin, let me start by saying that everything we talk about here is my opinion and not official investment advice. Please do your own research before making your own decisions with your money. With that out of the way, let's get into it. To get started trading NFTs, you'll need four things to start. First, social media accounts on Twitter, Discord, and Telegram. Second, a Web3 wallet, like MetaMask. Third, some tokens, in this case Ethereum, to pay for the NFT and transaction fees. Fourth, access to an NFT marketplace like OpenSea. Keep in mind that there are several chains where you can trade NFTs, but today we'll be focusing on NFTs on the Ethereum chain, specifically trading NFTs on OpenSea, the largest marketplace for buying and listing NFTs on the Ethereum chain at the time of recording this video. The first things you'll need are social media accounts for Twitter, Discord, and Telegram, depending on the project. You'll want to follow the official Twitter accounts of the NFT project you wish to purchase, as well as join their Discord servers or Telegram groups to keep in the loop on news and developments of each project. These are especially important if you're trying to participate in minting an NFT from the launch of a project. Second, you'll need to create a Web3 wallet for your crypto tokens and NFTs. This is where they'll be stored after you purchase them. In this example, I'm using MetaMask because I find that it is easy to use, especially for beginners, and is one of the most popular Web3 wallets. The third thing you'll need is some Ethereum tokens to pay for the NFT you're buying and the transaction fees. Ethereum tokens can be purchased using your bank card on centralized exchanges like Coinbase, FTX, Binance, and many others. Users may list their NFTs on OpenSea with prices in other coins like ApeCoin, USDC, Polygon, or Solana, but for the sake of this video, we'll be focusing on transactions made in Ethereum. And lastly, you'll need access to a marketplace for buying and selling NFTs. As I mentioned before, we'll be looking at OpenSea today because it is currently the largest NFT buying and selling platform, and the user experience is ideal for someone who is new to the NFT space. Now, there are two ways you can acquire an NFT. You can purchase an NFT that has already been minted and is available for sale on what is called the secondary market, using a marketplace like OpenSea, or you can try and participate in the minting process of a new NFT project. More on that in a moment. Let's get started by looking at how to buy an NFT on OpenSea. To buy an NFT, you'll want to find the project's official page on OpenSea. It is important that before you buy an NFT, you also check the project's social media accounts to make sure that the collection on OpenSea is the correct one for that project. Because unfortunately, for every legitimate project, there are always fake collections trying to mislead buyers. Let's say, for example, I wanted to buy an Alpaca Dabbers 3D NFT. I'm using this project only for demonstrative purposes. This is not a recommendation to buy into this project. Please do your own research before buying into any project. First, I would find the project's official OpenSea link. This can be found in the project's official Discord in the official links channel. You'll also want to check for it on the project's official website You can also find it on the project's official Twitter account in the top section of their biography. It is important that we find the official collection because we want to be sure that we are buying from the correct project and not getting scammed or selecting the wrong project. Next, after making sure that the collection is the real Alpaca Debra's 3D collection, we'll first want to filter for the NFTs that are up for sale by their owners. To do this, you go on the left side of the window and select the filter for Buy Now. You can also click on the floor price. This will sort the collection by price and show you the lowest priced NFTs in the collection for sale, as well as filter those on sale. Once I've found the NFT I want to purchase, I'll click into the NFT's listing page. On the NFT's listing page, you can see the properties or traits that are associated with that particular NFT.
you can also find statistics on how many times the NFT has been transferred or sold to different wallets towards the bottom of the page. If I want to proceed with purchasing this NFT after reviewing the traits, I'll click the Buy Now button. You'll then be prompted to connect your wallet with OpenSea. You'll sign into your MetaMask wallet, and then click back to the NFT page once the wallet has been connected. You can then click the Buy Now button once again. Once you click Checkout, the transaction details in MetaMask will open up in a separate pop-up. This window will tell you the type of transaction that you are doing on the network, the amount of tokens that you are transferring, as well as an additional fee shown that changes every 30 seconds or so. This is the gas fee. This is paid to miners who supply the computing power to run and validate the blockchain for Ethereum. This fee changes depending on how many people are trying to do transactions on the Ethereum network at any given time. Sometimes it is worthwhile to wait for gas fees to go down on the Ethereum network before completing a transaction. If your transaction isn't time sensitive, you can wait to do that transaction until a time when the network isn't as crowded and save some of your cryptocurrency. However, if you're in a rush to snatch up a particular NFT or complete a particular transaction, it's sometimes worthwhile to pay the higher gas fee. You can scroll to the bottom of the MetaMask window and click Confirm if the transaction looks good to you and you're comfortable paying the gas fees that are offered. Once you've submitted your transaction and it has been broadcast on the network, you can track the progress of your purchase transaction by checking the transaction hash or TX hash on Etherscan. The transaction hash can be found in the activity section of your MetaMask wallet. Once the transaction is confirmed by the network, you should be able to visit your profile on OpenSea and see your newly acquired NFT. Congratulations on your first NFT purchase! Another way to get NFTs is to participate in a project's presale mint. It is usually much cheaper to get into a project's presale mint than to buy the NFT on OpenSea in the secondary market, but it takes a lot more work from you as the user. When an NFT project gets launched on the blockchain, users who want one of these newly launched NFTs can participate in the project's mint. Minting is the process of newly created NFTs being added to the blockchain and distributed to users who participated in the project's presale. Similar to the way that physical coins are manufactured, the minting of an NFT can be compared to a fresh 25 cent coin coming out of the coin press at the mint. Newly minted NFTs are usually unrevealed, meaning you don't know which specific NFT you got in the mint from the project until the day of the project's reveal. Before the project's NFTs are revealed, there is usually anticipation about which NFT you got, similar to buying a pack of trading cards and hoping that there is something rare inside. Mints are usually held two ways, private mints and public mints. During a private mint, only specific users are allowed to participate in the mint. These selected users are put on what is called a whitelist. Different projects have their own criteria for how to get on their whitelist, and they usually share these criteria on their Discord server or on their Telegram group. Some projects reward early members of their online communities with whitelist spots. Whitelist spots are also usually given to people who contribute to the growth of the NFT project's community or are awarded as prizes in online raffles held on Twitter or within the project's Discord. It is important to follow a project's social media accounts for official news and opportunities to be part of their NFT's mint. Now let's say you manage to score yourself a whitelist spot for a project's mint, and the big day is here and it's time to mint your NFT. On the day of the project's minting, users on a project's whitelist may be given a specific amount of time to mint their NFTs. Sometimes it could be a few hours or a few days before the project holds a public mint to sell the remaining NFTs if there's any left over. It is important to pay attention to the time that the mint goes live and the duration for how long you have to mint your NFT. Give yourself enough time to potentially wait and watch gas fees before you mint. You don't want to miss your chance to mint by accident. The process to mint an NFT from a project's official website is usually quite straightforward, but instructions are also shared on the project's social media pages and Discord server. 
for this example, I'm going to choose a project that has held their mint recently. This is only an example and not a recommendation to mint this project. First, you'll want to find the official minting page of the project through the project's social media and Discord using the same process described earlier in the video when we were selecting a project to purchase on OpenSea. Once you've found the correct official page, you can start by connecting your wallet to the project's official website. You'll also need to provide a signature transaction to this particular website to prove that you are a real person. Now, after connecting your wallet, we can see on this page the price to mint this NFT is 75 SAND tokens. There is a button to buy SAND tokens if you don't have any, but you'll still need Ethereum to pay for gas fees for this particular project. If this project was offered with a price in Ethereum, you would not need to purchase any SAND tokens. In the middle of the page, you can see that your wallet is connected, and you can now select the number of NFTs that you are whitelisted for and want to mint. After picking the number of NFTs you want, go ahead and click the Mint button, and review the transaction in MetaMask similar to how you reviewed a transaction on OpenSea. If you are happy with the gas fees and want to proceed with the transaction, scroll down in MetaMask and click Confirm. Unfortunately, I don't have any sand in my wallet and will not proceed with minting this particular project. If, after a project's private mint, there are any NFTs left that have not been sold to whitelisted users, the remaining NFTs may go up for sale in the project's public mint. Some projects will also set aside certain amounts of NFTs for a public mint, regardless of whether or not the NFTs for the private mint sell out. During a public mint, anyone can try and mint an NFT from the project, but the price is usually higher than the price during the private mint. There is also a risk of a gas war, where other users who also want to get one of the public mint NFTs will set their acceptable gas limit extremely high and try to have their transaction prioritized over other people on the network. After you mint an NFT, the NFTs are usually distributed before they have been revealed. Some people enjoy the excitement of buying pre-reveal NFTs because there is a chance that you could get a rare NFT, but it all comes down to luck. After minting, be sure to check your OpenSea profile to see that the NFT has successfully been transferred to your wallet. You'll also want to refresh your metadata on reveal day to see which NFT you managed to score. The project's Discord or Twitter account will provide information on when their NFTs will be revealed, so always be sure to check back and make note of important dates and times for the projects you're participating in. So, to summarize, to get started buying and minting NFTs you'll need a Web3 wallet like MetaMask, social media accounts on Twitter, Discord, and Telegram to stay up to date with all the latest news about NFT projects, Ethereum tokens to spend, and a marketplace like OpenSea to conduct your transactions. And I can't say this enough. But always be sure to verify that you're doing transactions on the official pages and websites of the projects you wish to purchase or mint. Make sure that all URLs are spelt correctly and match the exact links shared on the project's social media. If you like this video and you learned something new today, why not consider giving the video a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel and click the notification bell so you get notified whenever we post a new video. If you have any ideas or questions about anything in the video that I've mentioned here that you want to learn more about, or just want to share your experience buying your first NFT, please drop a comment below. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.